Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is checking out Ubuntu DDE. Uh, if you're not sure what this is, it is a flavor of Ubuntu that has the Deepin desktop environment. Now we've taken a look at the Deepin desktop environment a couple of different times on this channel. Uh, essentially, it's a very modern, elegant, kind of Mac OS style desktop environment. It just looks really nice. So right here, this is the 2110 release. This was just released of this uh, version or this flavor of Ubuntu. And I, first things first, I really do like what they did with the background here. That's a creative, but this is the desktop down here. We have our taskbar, and we do have a couple of different options. If we go ahead and right click on it, here is where you can get your mode. This is fashion mode where it's this kind of square floating dock style. But if we go ahead, go to mode and go to efficient mode, it's going to drop it down and it's going to be a little bit more windows esque, even though if we go to the fashion mode, it's still basically the same menus and all that. In the middle here, of course, we have our favorited icons. Over here, we have some important buttons such as our volume control. It's really nice. They have an input selection built into this. Then over here, we have an onboard keyboard. So I could go ahead and enable that if I would like to. Let's get rid of that for now. We have our power. If I click on this, it takes us to our calendar application. One thing about this desktop environment, all the built-in applications are uh, phenomenally designed. So I'm going to close that out. Recycle bin. And right here we have our little notification center sidebar. Uh, one thing, this isn't looking too hot. You might want to change the, uh, the colors or something. I don't know. We have our start menu here with all of our different applications. This is alphabetical order. We have the Libre office suite on here. Do we have GIMP? We do have GIMP. Now this, I'm going to go ahead and open up GIMP because this is one of the applications that the buttons really didn't look right. And it looks like that they've fixed that, at least on this uh, virtual machine I have here, everything is uh, scaled properly. The buttons aren't weird. It was like it had a, this like bubble effect around it and it just squished all these icons and didn't, didn't look good at all. They got color picker. One thing that is really nice is their built-in screen capture utility. This is it right here. So if I were just to single click, I'm pretty sure it would take a picture of the entire desktop or I can drag and then here this is, and then I can actually manipulate this after the fact and then go ahead and add in some like shapes and whatnot to the actual screenshot. If we go down here, we have options. So you could change if you want this to be uh, different types of formats, show pointer, where you want it to save. The, the screenshot utility here is really nice. And then we go over here and click this button, screenshot finished. So we could go ahead and navigate to that. And it should show up. Oh no, I accidentally clicked on it. But the screenshot is going to be in the file manager, and now we can kind of show this off. Looks really good. I don't like how it looks like a uh, the icons are like a touchscreen type look, but it's okay. We go into recent. We're not going to have any, we're not going to have too much on our system. This is a fresh install. Uh, computers on LAN. Let's see if it's going to recognize. Usually it doesn't. Oh, it crashed. This is a virtual machine, so I can't really be too picky. Search or enter address. Let's let's see if it lets me do this. Enter my uh, Windows share. Okay, cool. I think it's gonna let me. There we go. Let's connect. Oh, and it's not gonna be saved. There we go. Okay, so it's just having. It's probably a virtual machine thing. I can't really give it too hard. Moving on. One of the big issues I had before was the. Uh, if you go over here, to this screen where you manage all your open windows and everything. For some reason, this was like a square and it would just show a really big version of the icon. But now we have these live window previews and I could go ahead and move these into different workspaces. And here I can open up new workspaces and you can see the background kind of changes for every workspace. Now let's head over to this workspace and check out some of these settings. We have accounts, we have display. So if we go into accounts, for example, you could change all that display. You have your scaling here. Uh, should I risk it? I'm going to risk it. Let's bump this up. Ah, yeah, I'll blow it out anyway. I'm going to put that back later. We have night shift here. We have a couple different options. We have a resolution and our refresh rates. If we go under default applications, this is nice, really easy way to go ahead and select what applications are going to be the default. For example, I could just switch it over to this application like that. Easy peasy. This right here, personalization, probably one of the most important parts. Uh, we have auto, so it's going to change in between light and dark, I believe, depending on the time of day, or you just set it to dark. For this, I'm actually vibing with the light. 
Uh, we have our accent color default is blue. We could change it to really whatever we would like. And then right here we have transparency. This is on the bottom bar. You can see it down there. So you can adjust that however you would like. You have rounded corners. Icon theme, you could change how the icons look, but it will still kind of be around this like touch screen square type deal. So that's however you prefer. Uh, notification stuff, you can set do not disturb and set up specific application specific settings for notifications, which is nice. Sound, typical stuff, you have the input device chooser built in that we just mentioned. Here's where you enable and disable various sound effects. You've probably been hearing a couple of them when I get notifications. We have our time zone set to Los Angeles for me. Nice little clock widget they got going on. Uh, power. A lot of a lot of these settings are just typical settings that you'd expect in any settings pane, but they've done a really good job with just how everything is laid out. If we go under super or system information, we have Ubuntu DDE and all the various version numbers, including our 5.13 kernel and the version of Ubuntu. Then right here, general general settings, I think. Uh, yeah, general settings. That's kind of a, uh, it says general settings and then boot menu. So that I think that isn't the best naming scheme for the boot menu settings, but here is your startup delay and you can enable or disable a theme. I'm gonna cancel that cause it's gonna mess with the uh, grub configuration. But yeah, the settings pane is looking really good. Of course we have the show desktop button. If I go over here, click it, it's gonna show our desktop. If I go ahead and right click this, one thing we could change is the location so we can move this to the left, the right, wherever you would like this to be. So I'm actually just gonna throw this back down here. And then specific elements on here, if you don't want them. So for example, let's say you don't want the trash bin there. All you do, right click, plugins, trash, and then that is gone. And overall, this is a this is a really nice desktop environment. It's come a long way, especially since last time I've taken a look at it. I'm not a fan of the title bar because that's a lot of wasted space, at least as far as the uh, default here. Custom toolbar, title bar disabled. There we go. That should be the default. Title bars are no fun in Firefox. So that's changeable. So that, that's very nice. It integrates well, but then you can see our buttons are a little screwy right here. You could compare it to uh, what it's supposed to look like. It's a little, little off. And one thing I think I forgot to go through is the wallpapers. The wallpaper selection and chooser is super cool. If you look down here, I just right click the desktop and I'm here and we could go ahead and change our wallpapers on lock screen or only desktop. And out of all of the distributions, uh, when it comes to switching your wallpapers, this is one of the coolest things right here. And then of course we could go back to the default, which is this guy. And then we have screen savers and you can see we got some, uh, kind of old school windows, windows XP esque or even older than that type of wall or screen savers. This is rendering fairly well for a virtual machine, let's be honest here. Lastly, I almost forgot to look at the store. I know this isn't a problem in Ubuntu, uh, the Ubuntu version of this, but on the actual Deepin version of this, it's uh, there's a lot of issues with the uh, language and translations and stuff, but it looks like this is doing pretty good. Let's go ahead and just grab an application real quick. So under development, Let's go something else. Let's go video and is MPV in here? MPV video player, install, type in a password and it's done. Easy as that. Um, so the store is really nice. Everything works. There's just doesn't seem to be that many things in here. So I don't think there's like flat pack support in here or anything like that. So that might be a, uh, a dilemma. There's really not too many options here. Like we have GNOME Web, we could go ahead and grab real quick. There we go. This is the Tech Hut Patreon. Uh, thank you to those of you who are members of the Patreon. You guys are uh, absolutely awesome. Or if you're a YouTube member, either or, you could join down below if you would like to. And big thank you to any of the people. So you, thank you to you specifically for watching this video to the end. You are absolutely fantastic. Uh, with all that, like always, links will be down below if you're interested in trying any of this out. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.